One day, a group of people wakes up and says, hmm, we can't protest against people flying with, for 20 euros with a low-cost carrier to London and fly back in a day just for fun. Let's go after these yachts. Formula One is sexy. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe if you get um, Elon Musk to buy a yacht, that would be something. He's busy. have it only, only battery power. He can be your client. <laughs> <laughs> If by using the more sustainable approach to yachting, meaning less fuel, less energy consumption in a, in a smart way, and also employing new technology, which maybe limits some of the things that you could do, nobody can have a problem with that. But you have to tell the story right. And yes, Peter, it has to come from the top. Yeah. But do you think this is something the industry should adopt? as a sort of overarching plan. Evolve or repeat? No, it is a doctor that. What's the difference between safety standards and onboard reality? Well, we're not going to cut corners. Evolve beyond and see the greater good for the industry. One is in your control and one very much outside your control. It's not guidance notes, which are a waste of time. We want, we want some regulation that's meaningful. Goes off and tells all his mates, don't buy a yacht, charter it. You cannot just wipe out and define the whole industry as, as just one single entity in that way. And I honestly think that there's a lot of people for example, that just graduate, that have no clue that the yachting industry even exists. And there is a big opportunity for us. We need to educate these people, we need to go to these schools, present what we do and inspire them to come to our industry. And the process of super yachts is getting many, many expertises all together in a whole like a four or five year process. So there goes a lot of love and effort and passion into one product. And that's the thing that sparked for me to, to want to become a yacht designer. Extinction. Extinction. Extinction Rebellion. Extinction Rebellion, the climate activist group. <laughs> With all the people that are here, the message we really want to get across is that you, as an industry, you're going to lose your social license to operate. a lot worse stigma when I started doing Below Deck than there is now. I feel like it's good that, you know, I personally look at what I do now with my students and like just watching these people from middle America or the middle of Australia, like that they don't even kind of have water around them and they've seen the show and they've been inspired and they're now like calling me starting their second season. And one of the reasons really, to be honest with you, that I started the channel was because of Below Deck and how I felt it didn't represent our industry. No offense to the Below Deck people here. The other reason really is, believe it or not, my mother became a fan of Below Deck, right? And she asked me, does this really happen on board? And I'm not sure it's like for the other guys, but on board my boats, you know, the the attitudes, the way they treat each other would never happen on board. And I thought, you know, I want to show something the real world. So what we started to do is showcase what it was like really, you know, from working on board during charter. We did a whole six month refit. We documented, videoed all that. And we really showed exactly what it is that we are doing on board.